What if I told you that Iran? Yes, Iran now is an important part of the Bible's great story of prophecy and world events. People frequently associate the Bible with Israel, Egypt, and Babylon. But what if I told you that Iran, known as Persia in biblical times, was more than simply another empire? It was a nation named in prophecy to determine the fate of God's chosen people. Iran's biblical Genesis tale is more fascinating than you might think. From Noah's lineage until Cyrus the Great's reign, the Iranians' history is intertwined with some of the most crucial events in biblical history. The truly surprising revelation is that God used Persia, a nation of pagan kings, to deliver Israel, rebuild the temple, and fulfill prophecies proclaimed centuries ago. In this video, we'll look at how the Bible explains the origins of the Iranian people, their ascent to prominence, and their crucial role in molding both the Old Testament and prophetic predictions for the future. Buckle up, because what you're about to hear will shift your perspective on Iran, not just as a modern-day nation, but as an important actor in God's unfolding plan for the entire world. To comprehend Iran's biblical roots, we must return to the account of Noah and his descendants. Following the Great Flood, Noah's three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, became the forefathers of all nations on the planet. According to the Table of Nations in Genesis 10, one of Japheth's sons was Madai, the Medes' progenitor. The Medes later formed a tight alliance with the Persians, and together they established the Medo-Persian Empire, one of the most powerful empires in history. Mahdi's descendants, the Medes, settled in what is now known as Iran. Persians who emerged from the same geographical location rose to prominence later. Yet both groups shared Iranian origin. So according to the Bible, the Iranians' forefathers came from Japheth, via Madai, putting the Iranian people in the biblical narrative from the start of post-flood history. This link connects the Iranian people to one of the Bible's oldest genealogies, laying the groundwork for their pivotal position in God's people's history. Fast ahead several centuries, and we see the birth of Persia, a kingdom that will play an important role in the biblical story. The Medes and Persians forged an alliance led by Cyrus the Great, who established the Achaemenid Empire, also known as the First Persian Empire. At its peak, the Persian Empire spanned from the Indus River to North Africa, encompassing many of the important regions described in the Bible, such as Israel, Babylon, and Egypt. However, Persia's significance extends far beyond its military and territorial power. Its significance stems from the way God utilized it to keep his promises to the Israelites. The Babylonian Empire, commanded by King Nebuchadnezzar, seized Jerusalem in 586 BC, destroyed the temple, and exiled the people of Judah. Jeremiah foretold that the Israelites would be held captive in Babylon for 70 years. Then came Cyrus the Great a Persian ruler who defeated Babylon in 539 B.C., and everything changed. The book of Ezra begins with Cyrus's order, freeing the Israelites to return to their land and rebuild the temple in Jerusalem. This occurrence is documented in Ezra 1, 1, 4, when Cyrus says that the Lord, the God of heaven, has given me all the kingdoms of the earth and has appointed me to construct a temple for him in Jerusalem, Judah. Over a century ago, the prophet Isaiah described Cyrus, a pagan monarch, as the one who would carry out God's plan to redeem Israel. Isaiah 4428, Isaiah 45, 1 In one of the most incredible episodes in biblical history, Persia, an outsider to God's covenant, became the instrument of God's rescue for his people. This was a watershed moment for Israel, emphasizing the importance of Persia in God's divine plan. One of the most striking aspects of Persia's biblical legacy is Cyrus the Great's role in Isaiah 4428. God refers to Cyrus by name more than 150 years before his birth, describing him as his shepherd who will carry out God's plans. In Isaiah 45, Cyrus is even referred to as God's anointed a status normally reserved for Israelite kings. How can a foreign pagan ruler be referred to as God's anointed? The explanation lies in God's sovereignty and power to employ anybody, including those outside his covenant people, to carry out his will. Cyrus's decision to enable Jews to return, 
and rebuild the temple was more than just a political gesture. It was a prophetic fulfillment. The prophet Jeremiah predicted that the Babylonian captivity would continue 70 years. Jeremiah 25, 11, 12, Jeremiah 29, 10, and Cyrus's ascent to power signaled the end of that period. The rebuilding of the temple in Jerusalem under Zerubbabel's direction, and with Cyrus's blessing was a critical step toward Israel's restoration. God had used Persia not merely to destroy Babylon, Israel's oppressor, but also to facilitate Israel's national rebirth. This served as a reminder to Israel and the rest of the world that God's plan is far greater than any single empire, and that He can use even the most unlikely persons to carry it out. Persia's contribution to biblical history did not end with Cyrus and the rebuilding of the temple. The Book of Esther provides another stunning example of how God used Persia to safeguard His people. During the reign of King Xerxes I, also known as Ahasuerus in the Bible, Haman, a Persian court official plotted to eliminate the Jews residing in the empire. Haman's hatred for Jews pushed him to trick the king into writing a decree that allowed for their annihilation. However, through God's providence, a young Jewish lady named Esther became queen of Persia. Encouraged by her uncle Mordecai, Esther approached the king and revealed her Jewish origins, appealing for her people's survival. Esther 414 recalls Mordecai's famous words to Esther, who knows but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. Esther's involvement caused a significant reversal. When King Xerxes learned of Haman's duplicity, he ordered his execution, and a new decree was issued permitting Jews to defend themselves against their oppressors. This event, told in the Book of Esther, is commemorated annually during the Jewish festival of Purim. As a reminder of how God used Persia, namely Queen Esther, to save the Jewish people. The narrative of Esther is about divine providence and protection. Persia, despite being a foreign empire, once again served as a means of protection for God's people. God's hand was seen throughout the story, as the Persian Empire served as a background for the miraculous rescue of the Jews from extermination. This indicates how, despite not being part of the covenant people of Israel, Persia continued to play an important role in God's plan. Persia was more than just a passive observer. It actively participated in securing Israel's survival, a nation destined to produce the Messiah. The Bible does not merely discuss Persia's historical role. It also placed Persia in the center of prophetic prophecies concerning the future of world empires and God's ultimate plan for humanity. The book of Daniel provides one of the most powerful illustrations of this. Daniel, a Jewish prophet who lived during the Babylonian exile, worked in the courts of both the Babylonian and Persian empires. The book of Daniel has multiple visions that depict the rise and collapse of civilizations, including Persia. In Daniel 2, King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon has a dream about a large statue constructed of several materials, each signifying a world dominion. The silver chest and arms of the statue represent the Medo Persian Empire, which succeeded Babylon as the dominant power in the ancient world. Later, in Daniel 7, Daniel has a vision of four beasts representing four successive empires. The second beast, a bear raised up on one side, represents the Meadow Persian Empire, symbolizing its dual nature and the combined strength of the Medes and Persians. This empire was vast, and its expansion, particularly under Cyrus, would forever alter the course of history. Another significant vision involving Persia is found in Daniel 8, where the prophet sees a ram with two horns, one representing the Medes and the other the Persians, charging in all directions, conquering vast territories. However, the vision also includes a goat with a prominent horn, symbolizing Greece and its king, Alexander the Great, who would eventually conquer the Persian Empire. These visions place Persia at the heart of God's prophetic timeline, showing that the empire's rise, and fall were not mere accidents of history but part of God's divine plan. Persia's time of influence was prophesied to give way to the rise, but it was during Persia's reign that God's people experienced deliverance and restoration, fulfilling the prophecies of Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Ezekiel. Though the Persian Empire fell to Alexander the Great in the 4th century BC, its influence continued to be felt during the time of the New Testament. 
By the time of Jesus' birth, the Persian Empire had been replaced by the Greek and later Roman empires. However, the legacy of Persian culture, governance, and administration left a lasting impact on the ancient world. One of the more mysterious connections between Persia and the New Testament is the story of the Magi, the wise men who visited the infant Jesus in Matthew 2. Many scholars believe that the Magi were likely from the region of Persia and may have been Zoroastrian priests, part of an ancient religious tradition in Persia that practiced astrology and omen interpretation. The journey of the Magi to worship the newborn king of the Jews highlights Persia's enduring connection to the biblical story even after the fall of the Persian Empire. The wisdom traditions of Persia continued to influence the ancient Near East, and it was Persian scholars who recognized the significance of the star that heralded Jesus' birth. Additionally, Persia's legacy of tolerance toward various cultures and religions set the stage for the spread of Judaism and eventually Christianity throughout the Roman Empire. The Achaemenid Persian Empire was known for allowing its subjects to maintain their religious practices, a policy that would later influence other empires, including Rome. This environment of religious freedom contributed to the flourishing of Jewish communities throughout the region and laid the groundwork for the eventual spread of the gospel. As we conclude this exploration of Persia's biblical role, it's important to consider Iran's future in light of biblical prophecy. Many scholars and theologians believe that Iran, known in biblical prophecy as Persia, will play a key role in the events of the end times. One of the most significant prophecies involving Persia is found in Ezekiel 38:39 where the prophet describes a coalition of nations that will one day come against Israel in the last days. Among these nations is Persia, which will join forces with Gog of Magog and other nations in a massive battle known as the War of Gog and Magog. This prophecy, often seen as an event yet to occur, depicts a final confrontation between the forces of evil and God's people. With Israel at the center of the conflict, while the exact nature and timing of this war remain subjects of debate, the inclusion of Persia, modern-day Iran, in this prophecy suggests that Iran's influence in the region will continue to have spiritual significance in the end times. Additionally, Daniel's prophecies about the rise and fall of empires, including Persia, point to a broader theme of God's sovereignty over the nations. Persia's role in biblical prophecy demonstrates that no empire, no matter how powerful, is outside of God's control. God raises up nations and brings them down according to His divine plan. As we witness modern-day events in the Middle East, including tensions between Iran and Israel, it's essential to remember that these events are part of a much larger story, a story that began in the pages of the Bible and will culminate in the fulfillment of God's promises. The story of Persia, now modern-day Iran in the Bible, is one of the most remarkable examples of how God can use even the most unlikely nations to fulfill His divine purposes. From the descendants of Japheth, through Madai to the rise of Cyrus the Great, Persia played a pivotal role in biblical history. From the restoration of Israel to the protection of the Jewish people in the Book of Esther. But Persia's significance doesn't end with its historical role. The prophecies of Daniel, Isaiah, and Ezekiel remind us that Persia was part of God's larger plan not only for the nations of the past, but for the future as well. Iran's place in biblical prophecy points to its continued role in the unfolding events leading to the end times. As we look at the modern world, particularly the tensions involving Iran and Israel, it's essential to approach these events with a biblical perspective. God's sovereignty over the nations means that every kingdom, empire, and leader is part of His plan. The story of Persia is a testament to the fact that God can use even foreign powers to fulfill His promises and bring about His ultimate plan for salvation. Persia, now Iran, continues to have a profound influence on the world stage, and its connection to the Bible reminds us that history is more than the rise and fall of empires. It is the unfolding of God's plan for the redemption of His people and the world.